we have Franca Andor, whose short story, Mansa, was published in the Kane Prize for African Writing, 2009 edition. And my good friend, Wachua Glover, author of Circles, a romantic drama based in the 21st century Ghana. Shall we welcome the three ladies? You're welcome, ladies. We will have Nana Nyaku Boateng start. I'm going to hand her the mic and she'll do her own thing. Shall we welcome her as well? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Bride is not wife. Wife, not mother. Mother, not woman. Woman, not married, not sad, has child, has bills, is janty. Bride becomes wife sometimes. Wife is mother sometimes. Mother is woman sometimes. Woman is childless, is happy, is lucky like children unborn. Bride vows to be wife for cleaning, for caressing, in ponytail, praying like my mama till I, not bride, not wife, not mother, just woman, look in the mirror and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. I am. Okay, so that was just so you would know I am short because if the thing was here, you would know. Um, I have a short story, which I'm supposed to read, but um, I'm not going to read because it's long. And if I read it, you get bored and be wondering what your 10 CDs has done for you. So we are going to do an answer same style. But I'm going to read because then I expect me to read excerpts of the story. So I'm going to tell you the story, and then I'll read excerpts of it, and I'll get out of your hair. Is that good? Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. Thank you. He was asking if I wanted a mic stand, just in case you're wondering what I'm saying. I'm good. So this is a story about a girl who has struggles and questions about what it takes to be a woman. Because you see, everybody says things. Everybody has all these prescriptions about who a woman is or who an ideal woman should be, who a real woman is. So this girl is very confused because when she was 12 years old, she menstruated. And her mother told her that she's now a woman. You know, after giving her bald egg and praying over her, she told her that she is fertile, beautiful, and set to bleed month after month. So from 12 years, she believes that she's a woman until she gets to secondary school and in her final year, she finds a boyfriend and on their last day, the, the final day after examination, they decide to, you know, do it. And they do it. And after the guy has arrived and is happy, looks at her and tells her that you are now a woman. So she's very confused and said, I thought I was a woman four years ago. But oh, this guy is saying I'm now a woman. Okay, so that happened. And then she turns 18 years and she finds out that according to the constitution, she's now a woman. So this, this girl has become a woman three times already and she's very confused and she's wondering, is this it? Am I finally a woman now? Or is there any other thing that I have to do to remain a woman? I'll take you back to their first time. So I'm going to read to you now. I should have opened the paper, huh? So this is when, a part of when they had done it or were doing it. It seemed never ending, sucking and licking on something that doesn't diminish. Baby Jack, kept on grabbing my head and making all these sounds that made me feel uncomfortable. I was out of the dark classroom spitting like a pregnant woman before he could ask me to come back in. 
He joined me on the veranda and asked if I was okay. I said yes, but I wasn't going to get back on my knees. And he said that was fine. We started kissing again. And in my mind, I was preparing for him to also get on his knees and go fast with no teeth on me. But that didn't happen. Rather, he reached into my panties with his fingers and began to poke me with his index finger. That made me shiver a little. I felt tingly, and the next day, my vagina was sore. So I found out about sex, <laughs> and it was about sores and becoming a woman, something I had become twice already. For a third-time woman, I felt sufficiently puzzled. Had I arrived? Is there something I needed to do to remain a woman? I wasn't sure, but I felt lied to. My mother lied, the Constitution lied, and baby Jack lied. And today when he comes, I'll ask him how I can be a woman without him. I'll ask him if he thinks it's even possible. They say, because from what people say, I am nowhere close to being a real woman. They say, real women can cook. Real women are married. A real woman gets pregnant and masters the art of wiping feces off the butt of a baby without smearing crap beyond the crack of the ass. They say so many things and no one ever tells me where it all ends. I am afraid. I am afraid that maybe I don't have what it takes to remain a woman. I mean, if tasting semen and bleeding month after month is not enough, how do I stay a woman? I feel deficient because sometimes someone, I feel deficient because someone is always reminding me of how much of a woman I am not. They say I don't even talk like a woman. My voice is deep. I am not shy like a woman. I speak back and ask useless questions all the time. They say I don't even know women things like the best body lotions and the titles of telenovelas on TV. If I am not a woman, what am I? I have fears that one day I'll wake up and my breast would be replaced by two penises. <laughs> and what would I be then? A man? I don't want to be a man. Yet, no one has endorsed my womanness after my first time with baby Jack. Then he, show, he shows up at our gate today. He was as attractive as I remembered him to be. In his yellow silky shirt over a blue pair of jeans, there was something not baby Jack about him anymore. He had left his beard to grow over half of his cheeks. His dimples were there beneath his facial hairs. I could see it, but I didn't think I should do it. It has been two years. I want to be a woman. Okay, so I'll stop reading now, and I'll tell you what happens because it gets long. So she really has nightmares about, and about her breast turning into penises, and she's... And you would wonder why she would have nightmares if it's been two years since she, she last did it and she has survived without it. But there was this neighbor who paid her a little attention. And according to the neighbor's sister, her brother was treating her like a woman because he bought her fun eyes and meat pie, you know, and also invited her to the movies, which she never went. So after a while, he stopped buying fan eyes and meat pie. And that was when she started panicking, because why is he not treating me like a woman anymore? You know? So she has one of these nightmares one day and, and decides to text Baby Jack, so come to my house and bring a CD. So he knows what is going to happen. But Baby Jack gets there, and he doesn't feel like he knows this guy. Besides, he has alcohol in his breath. And she's not sure if... Sleeping with a man with alcohol on his breath make you more or less of a woman. You know, she's not trying to reduce anything. She's trying to become more of a woman. So she can't decide and says, okay, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. And then they start, you know, kissing and all of that. And then she finds a sore on baby Jack's face. Now she had just returned from a three-week Ghana AIDS Commission workshop on HIV AIDS. You know what that does to you. So she sees the saw and she's like, okay, he has alcohol in his breath. He has a saw. Oh, God, does he have AIDS? <laughs> and so one saw, and she decides it's important to me to remain a woman. To, so let's give baby Jack a, another chance. And they go on. She, he's unbuttoning her shirt. And then she sees another saw in between her thumb and her index finger. Now the hardness in her nipples left. And she has to fake a headache. 
So she says, you have to go. I have a really bad headache. You know what will happen. Baby Jack gets angry and says, you texted me. I didn't even, why are you being, playing hard to get all of that? And she says, listen, I have a headache. It's not like I didn't want it. I did, but now I have a headache. So we have to do it another time. And she says, oh, I'll make your headache go. You know I can do that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> No, she's scared of HIV, so it's not happening. And they fight, and he leaves. You know what she does? She picks up her phone, like most of us would do, called up her best friend, and Ajwa, yeah, he just left. Mm, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And do you know what Ajwa said? Ajwa said she is now a woman in charge of her body and her fears. Thank you.